gentle breeze stirs in the land of Israel and speaks an ancient biblical injunction. Thou shalt redeem the land. In the redemption of the Holy Land, a steadfast partnership has endured for more than 50 years. A partnership between the Jewish National Fund and the movement of religious Zionism consisting of Mizrahi, Mizrahi women, and Hapoel HaMizrahi. It is a partnership based on a deep understanding that to redeem the land means also to redeem the soul of a people. That the spiritual rebirth of the Jewish people cannot be accomplished without redeeming the land itself. This vision of the eternal bond between the land and the people was shared by our leaders. Among them, Professor Z. Herman Shapira, who conceived the idea of the Jewish National Fund, and Menachem Mendel Osishkin, whose uncompromising devotion and perseverance of a lifetime gave practical form to the work of land redemption. Yet it was left to the late Rabbi Meyer Bayer Elan, world Mizrahi leader and dynamic founder of the American Mizrahi movement, to find the words which form the bridge between Mizrahi and the JNF, the motto of Mizrahi, the land of Israel for the people of Israel in the spirit of Israel's Torah. The spirit of Torah flourishes at Beit Meir, which bears the name of the late Rabbi Bari Lag. This moshav, founded in 1950 in the Jerusalem Corridor, is one of the settlements developed on Karen Kayemet land by the Mizrahi organization. At Beit Meir, Orthodox immigrants from Poland, Hungary, and Romania have found a new life, a life in keeping with their cherished dream of a Torah true Zion. Like thousands of others who have found their way to the gates of Israel, these settlers were for the most part city dwellers, merchants, teachers, businessmen. Yet as they draw sustenance from the 10,000 dunams of JNF land, they find happiness and satisfaction. Perhaps they remember that from the very soil they till, in ancient times came wine for the services at the temple in Jerusalem. Each square inch of land echoes the history of the Jewish people. Here at Jibna, the elders of Judea, under the guidance of Yochanan ben Zakkai, studied and debated. On the very site of this abandoned Arab mosque, 1900 years ago, the learned assembly of Israel convened. Today the tradition is continued. Near Jibna, on the land of Kibbutz Yavna, one of the scores of flourishing Hapoel Hamazraki settlements, stands a great new yeshiva, Karim Beyavna. At Karim Beyavna, sponsored by the late Rabbi Bar Ilan and Menachem Nesishkin, the teachings of the sages are passed onward to the youth of Kibbutz Yavna. Like the disciples of the ancient academy, they imbibe the timeless wisdom of their faith, finding new meaning in interpretations still fresh after 1900 years. But Torah is not limited to the classroom in Mizrahi settlements. It is a way of life that begins at sunrise before the long day's work. A way of life that beautifies each moment of productive living on the land. As the members of Kibbutz Yavna gather the harvest, the fruit of their labor and belief, from their hearts and minds there rises a prayer of thanksgiving. This is the promised land, yearned for in exile, tilled now at last by Jewish hands, giving up its harvest that the state of Israel and its people may grow. At Yavna, as in all religious settlements, the settler takes his work seriously. He knows he is a vital asset in a great undertaking. He knows that he cultivates not only the land, but a spiritual center for the Jewish people. At 
kibbutz, Yavna, as at all the Moshevim and kibbutzim of the religious Zionist movement, children learn early of the partnership between the Karen Kayemet and Mizrahi. The great story is told once again. How the Zlotis and the Kroner, the marks and cents and pennies, poured into the little blue and white boxes. And how this stream of dedication flowed toward Israel, that these little children might be born and live in the re-established land of their fathers. Some of them may one day enter the Bar Ilan University, which the Mizrahi Organization of America is building on JNF land at Ramat Gan. American religious Zionists take special pride in Kafar Darom, where 200 young Americans are reclaiming the soil and building their future in the spirit of the Haboel Hamazraki movement. Kfar Darom was partially destroyed by the Egyptians during the war for independence and is now being rebuilt. These earnest young men do not give a thought to the luxuries and comforts of their homes in the United States, the homes they left of their own free will. They were prepared for their life in Israel at a training farm in New Jersey. At Kfar Darom, one finds reminders of the American origin of these young people. Beach chairs in the sun, and the sound of music from an American-made portable radio. The Howard Citron Center at Otleet, named for the late Howard Citron of Utica, is the most recent example of JNF Mizrahi cooperation. Eventually, 400 children will be housed here. This center underlies Mizrahi's concern for the children of youth Aliyah. It is the Mizrahi's Women's Organization of America, however, that with maternal instinct has given full expression to the concern of the religious Zionist movement for Israel's youth Aliyah children. At Kfar Batya, Mizrahi Women's Children's Village and Farm School, named for Mrs. Bessie Gottsfeld, honorary national president of Mizrahi Women, Children from 23 different lands are learning to work and grow together. Geography is an easy subject for children who have fled across continents in search of safety. Perhaps they know too much geography for their ages. Kfar Batya and the Mossad Aliyah Children's Village at Petak Tikva are known as among the finest children's villages in all of Israel. Not only for their magnificent buildings, like the Bar Ilan Memorial School and Vocational Center, but for the inner spirit of these villages which stand on JNF land. This inner spirit flourishes in the fields and farmlands of Mizrahi women's children's villages. Orphans from Europe and children from the slums and ghettos of North Africa and the Middle East find new confidence. When you learn through the silent lessons of the land that seedling follows seed and blossom follows seedling and that surely the fruit will follow the blossom, you learn too that there is a higher power and somehow you begin to know it will protect and care for you. The lesson is learned slowly. It takes patience and skilled teachers. It takes also the land on which you teach it. Land which would not be there, but for the Jewish National Fund. The machine shops and industrial training classrooms provide another avenue for religious youth to aid in building Israel's self-sufficiency. The choice of training is wide in the extensive vocational training program of Mizrahi women. The skills taught here will spark Israel's industrial effort and provide trained workers for Moshevim and Kibbutzim to which many of these youth Aliyah graduates will go. Girls as well as boys are trained at Mizrahi women's children's villages, learning the skills of home craft, so that in time they may be wives and mothers in Israel. Jewish wives, Jewish mothers, familiar with the age-old laws of Kashrut. 
Sometimes it seems as if the older girls are already mothers to the younger. For these children look to each other for comfort and love, for guidance and support. Because many have lost their parents at a tender age, and many have no relatives at all, the bonds of love and friendship grow strong between them. They are a kind of family, sheltered beneath the roof of their father's house, the house of Israel. Yes, the spirit of these villages is what makes them great. A spirit of tenderness in a land of faith. The wellsprings of their faith lie in the observances of the traditions of their fathers. From early morning until bedtime, the religious atmosphere makes itself felt. A warm, protective, comforting atmosphere. One which recreates each day the legacy of wisdom and belief of the Jewish people and the Jewish faith. Religious observance is a natural part of life. It is woven into the fabric of living, a constant thread that shows in all activities. The labor of their hands helps build Israel's material well-being and at the same moment passes onward the treasures of the human spirit. In Mizrahi women's children's villages, the preparations for Pesach, as for other holidays, are entered into with will and vigor. It was on this sacred soil that the rituals were shaped and brought into the body of the law of Israel. Each child knows that he, he himself, has been taken out of bondage and redeemed. Yes, the calendar of Jewish living is a living calendar, and life itself records the passing seasons and the passing days, the days of growth and understanding, of a way of life which is, in the deepest sense, true to the Torah. In these children's villages, as in all Mizrahi work, the words of the Shema come to vibrant life and live each day. Vishinantam levanecha, vidibarta bam, Bishivtecha bevetecha uvelechtecha vaderech uvishovecha uvekumecha ukishartam leot al yadecha vehayu le totafot beinecha uchetaftam al nuzuzot beitecha uvishe arecha. As the Jewish National Fund celebrated its 50th anniversary, its golden jubilee. It embarked on a gigantic enterprise, the reclamation of the region of the Hula. This northern part of Israel is close to the Syrian border in eastern Galilee. Until a lasting peace has been achieved, it remains a troubled area. The Hula Plain was once famous for the abundance of its crops, for the richness of its soil, fed by the waters of the Jordan. But in the course of time, the waters overflowed, and no longer able to flow freely, stagnated. Today, most of the Hula is uninhabitable swampland. In the shadows of its ragged mountains, behind its veils of mist, lurk decay and disease. The malaria-carrying mosquito reigns supreme over the swampland, challenging the entry of man. With all other major Zionist organizations, the religious Zionist movement is participating in the reclamation of this area. As the Hula becomes habitable, all of the organizations of Mizrahi will establish in this region the settlement of Nakhlat HaChamishim, honoring the golden jubilee of the World Mizrahi Movement and 50 leaders of religious Zionism. Land reclamation and deforestation through the Jewish National Fund are a continuing effort of the Mizrahi Movement. As the children of this Mizrahi Women's Project tenderly plant young saplings on two bishvat, the link between Mizrahi and Karen Kayemet is strengthened anew. The partnership which has made green the bare mountainsides and helped to beautify the plains of Sharon and the hills of Galilee 
is symbolized by the scores of forests which dot the countryside. Each year, new forests are planted, keeping pace with Mizraki's dedication to the land, this holy land, this Jewish land which is our heritage. In a solemn ceremony, thousands of children gather in the Judean hills to plant seedlings in the Yar Hayaladim Hakidoshim, the forest honoring the memory of the martyred children of the Hitler era. Among the thousands stand hundreds of children of the Mizrahi movement. Their faces, their hope. This also is the reward of half a century of Mizrahi Jewish National Fund cooperation. A cooperation which will go forward from strength to strength. The tens of thousands of men and women of the religious Zionist movement know not only that there must be faith to build a land, they know as well there must be land to build the Jewish faith. <laughs>